Okay, so we're going to look at buoyancy here and up thrust. I said to you before that any pressure difference gives us some kind of force. Now, I talked about a bottle where you remove the air, you've got a pressure difference there. You're taking more of the particles out, so you've got a pressure difference between the inside and the outside of the bottle, so you're going to apply a force onto the bottle. So any pressure difference will provide a force. So make sure you know that. We're going to start off with that as well. Any pressure difference will um, create an unbalanced force. Okay, now that unbalanced force will cause an acceleration. If that, accel like that acceleration then goes off to a constant velocity, the forces will become balanced, okay? But you've still got an unbalanced force in one direction, which could be balanced by another force. So when we talk about buoyancy, we're talking about water, we're talking about fluids, we're talking about what forces an object to rise up inside water. So it's buoyancy. I can't spell buoyancy. I think it's B-O-U. B-U-O. B-U-O. See? I told you I can't spell it. Okay, so buoyancy is the force which causes any object submerged underwater to rise up, or any object in a fluid to rise up. Okay, so buoyancy is the force which causes any object in a fluid to rise up. It's also known as up thrust. But up thrust is slightly different for gases. You have up thrust in a balloon, for example, and that's what makes it rise up in the air. That's up thrust. But buoyancy is specific for fluids. Buoyancy causes objects to rise up when they're inside a fluid. Now, Bearing in mind what I've just said, any pressure difference will create an unbalanced force. We create a buoyancy by having a pressure difference. Now, you will not ever have to do calculate up thrust or buoyancy for an object that's not a uniform shape, top and bottom. Okay, so you don't have to do anything complicated. What we will have to do is work out buoyancy for just standard shapes, usually cubes um, or cylinders. And what we would have is you'd have a water level, and we'll just put a tank in. And here is your water level on top. And we're going to put an object, uh, we'll say a cube, or, a, or some kind of cuboid, under the water, like that there. Now, the pressure difference, what's going to cause this cube, that says it's made of polystyrene, what it says we're going to make, cause this cube to rise up or experience some type of force, is going to be the pressure difference on the top and the bottom. Now, remember, pressure in a fluid equals rho. G H. So that's the height that is below the surface. So we're going to have two heights. We're going to have a height at the bottom of the object and a height at the top. So we'll have a height here. So that's one height. And we're also going to have a height here, which is two heights. So we're going to have two pressures. So we're going to have a pressure difference. So we'll have the pressure on the bottom of the, cu the, the cuboid and a pressure on the top of the cuboid, depending on the fluid. Okay? So we'd have, let's say this is H1 and H2, then we're going to have P1 equals rho G H1, and P2 equals rho G H2. And the pressure difference is going to be P2 minus P1, or P1 minus P2. It's just the difference between the two. So pressure difference is going to be equal to P1 minus P2. Now, I'm not saying the, the pressure difference is simply the difference between the two of them. It's not about what sign is it. Is that a negative pressure? You can't get that. It's just what is the pressure difference. So pressure difference is P1 over P2. Now, if we want to know what force is being supplied, then pressure equals force over area. So if we want to know the force, the up thrust, causing this box to rise up, then F equals um, P times A. 
So it's going to be P1 minus P2 times the surface area of the cuboid. So this here would be your upthrust, the pressure difference times the surface area. We're saying the surface area, A, equals the same for the top and the bottom. So the pressure difference multiplied by the area gives us a force. And this F will be equal to our up thrust, also known as our buoyancy. That's what's going to force this cuboid up the way. Now, I have an up thrust, which is great. I have up thrust. So let's put that on a diagram. F, up thrust, on a diagram, equals F, up thrust. I've done up thrust. Now, depending on the, the acceleration of the block will depend on what? What the acceleration of the block depend on? Mm. How fast it will move up to the top? Mass. What? Mass, yep. Yeah. Which causes? Mass which causes what? Weight. Weight. So we'll always have a weight also acting on the block. So the weight will also be... Um, we also have weight acting down. So that will be W acting down. So you're going to have an unbalanced force out of the two of those, which lets you calculate the acceleration of the block as it rises up. Now, if the weight of the block is too much, then the block will sink. If it has enough, if the weight of the block is, is um, small enough, then it will rise up. Okay, so it's all about balancing off the unbalanced forces, making sure you've got the, the up thrust and the weight balanced out enough to give you enough up thrust to rise up to the top of the surface. Okay, so that is buoyancy, that is up thrust. Now, if you, for some reason, have an object which is not uniform at top and the bottom, this is a basic example, this is generally what you'll get in the exam. I want to just quickly run through one that's not uniform. It's difficult to do it, but let's say you've got an object which uh, is shaped differently. Just for example, let's say it's um, an object shaped like this. And see that's sitting in the, the water, then we're going to have H2, H1. It just, this will probably not come up. If it does, you get two different pressures there, H1 and H2. However, you'll need to work out your forces separately and then subtract, you find out what your overall unbalanced force is. So you're going to have a force in the top and a force in the bottom. So, P2 equals rho. G H2 and the force on the top of the container is going to be, so you're going to have, this is going to be A2 on the top, A1 on the bottom, that's the surface area. So therefore, the force 2 on the top is going to be equal to um, P2 times A2 rho G H2 times A2. So that will give you the overall force acting on the top of the box. And that's going to be acting down the way. And then the same goes for P1, rho, G, H1, F1. P1 times A1, rho, G, H1 times A1. So you can work out your forces separately. Difference in pressure is usually enough for a uniform box. If the box is different areas, top and bottom, then you can work out your forces separately. So the overall unbalanced force it's going to be a combination of these two. You've got pressure down here, pressure acting on this part here, and you're going to have the difference in forces. So it's going to be the difference in the force. So the delta F, change in force, is going to equal to your um, up thrust. Okay? You got that? Yep. So you can put down beside that non-uniform objects. Non-uniform objects. And I'm going to put le less common. You don't have many questions in this, but some it's less common to have that. You can normally get away with just the pressure difference. And I'll let you work out uniform forces. OK? 
Okay. We're now going to have a look at past paper question on this to get started, and then we'll do some questions today and tomorrow on pressure, buoyancy, up thrust, etc.